<laughs> Good morning, world. Hey, yo, what's going on? It's your boy, F-R-E, dollar sign, H, fresh at the Flyboy Way. That's T-H-E-F-L-Y-B-O-Y-W-A-Y. Don't ask why, just check out the channel. And I'm here with another episode of the Black Man's Guide to World Travel. This time, we're heading out way overseas to Dubai and United Arab Emirates. Shout out to Combo Boy Mel and Educated Fred. He was with me on the trip. When it comes to Dubai, this is something that is known for being flashy. It's known for being expensive. It's known for being prices. And guess what? I'm not going to tell you anything different. It really is kind of expensive. First thing I did was I booked a flight. So I was playing around with the numbers and the numbers jumped a lot. The flight cost between $700 and $1,100. On any given point, you can pay between that much and you pretty much will be in within a reasonable pricing. The one thing I say is prepare to take at least a 14 hour trip on a plane. This is the longest trip I've ever been on. Now the first thing you wanna do, and I don't know about any other airlines, but for this 14 hour ride, I would say make sure you fly with Emirates. That's E-M-I-R-A-T-E-S. Emirates plane is huge. They have a upstairs and a downstairs in the plane. They have a business class, a first class, and a coach. I flew in coach. The coach for Emirates is better than first class in some other planes I've seen. On the flight, they have video games that you can play. Of course, they have the movies and have the music you can listen to, but they have video games that you can play. So me and my friends, we uh, hopefully I can show you in the background. We played each other in Street Fighter. Of course, I won. Um, we played each other in Tetris, and you can play other people on the plane in other other games, which is amazing. The service A1, they actually give you food because it's a 14 hour flight. So they give you like three meals, which is dope. Um, once I got off the airplane in Dubai, it was a waterfall in the airport. Coming from the United States, everybody looks at the United States like, oh, we're like amazing and everything is amazing. But when we went to Dubai, it was like, yo, what is this? This is like unbelievable. Now, Dubai is probably the only place where I exchange in the airport. The reason why I say this is because I didn't see many currency exchange places although the hotel it depends what hotel you stay at because the hotel that we stayed at also has currency exchange now the hotel we stayed at was the rotana it was an amazing hotel it was a five star hotel but even before we got to the hotel we was getting five star service before we got down there we talked to my homie flop now flop kept telling us about something called the york international which we'll, we'll get into later when i get to the woman part the woman part for dubai is going to be a little bit short because it's an islamic place and i don't want to offend anybody but um it's going to be at this point right here in the video the woman part is going to be found at this point in the video right here. So if you want to hear about the women of Dubai and the women of uh, Abu Dhabi and the women of the United Arab Emirates, you'll uh, you'll see it in this point right here on the screen. Okay, so now let's talk about currency exchange. For every U.S. dollar, you get 3.5 dirhams. Now, dirhams are what they use in United Arabs or at least in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. It's The prices are pretty, pretty good either way. I mean, for somebody coming from metropolitan is a little bit higher in comparison to other countries like in south america or in um in uh like the caribbean but uh one to three one to three ratio is not that bad we stayed there for about five nights i think it was five or six nights um we stayed there for it so it was another like 240 dollars for a, another bed just to put in the room that was like not even that big but it was a it was a pretty it was a pretty dope room i mean the whole hotel was five stars okay so just like i do on all my other trips prior to going to dubai i booked and planned for activities now we didn't really know too much about dubai i googled dubai couldn't find too much information but i found a lot of activities to do so we did a couple activities that i'm going to show and I'm going to discuss as we do it we the first activity we did was the sand excursion now the sand excursion is like a, a group of three different activities that you do. It's like you go on the um, camels, you ride on four wheelers, and you sand surf. When I mean by sand surf is mean you're on a on a snowboard. Well, you're on a on a board, and it's like snowboarding, but it's in the sand. So it's sandboarding. <laughs> it's a little bit different from snowboarding because snowboarding you have a more control and more ease. And sandboarding, man, I am so out of shape. That's all I'm going to say. 
I'm so out of shape. <laughs> the reason why I say I'm out of shape is because, you know, out of the three of us, of course, you know, I went the farthest down the hill with the, with the sandboard. But once you go far down the hill, you got to walk back up the hill in the sand. And this is close as it seems. It's a lot of work. And it's hot out there. After we did the sandboard and we rode on the four-wheelers. Oh, man, the four-wheelers is dope. I think this, the sandboard was cool. It was a first-time experience, especially for some people, for myself coming from Newark, New Jersey. But the four-wheelers was a better, um, a better, it was more fun of a time, rather. The four-wheelers was so much fun. We got to, like, actually, like, turn up and, like, you know, the guide was like, be careful because you can get stuck. But he gave us some leeway and we was, oh, man, we was turned up in that bad boy. Then after the four wheelers, you get to ride on the camera. What I didn't know at the time was that while I was doing the snowboarding, I hurt my groin area because you'll see in one of the videos when I like was on the snowboarding and I didn't fall. I just like got off and I was walking on the, on the, um, I was walking on the sand. I was running on the sand from the snowboard, but, but I still managed to do it and it was still an amazing time on the camel. But you can kind of see me sitting awkwardly on the camel. So after we did the sand excursion, we went to the Emirates Mall. Now there's two major malls in Dubai. There's Emirates Mall and there's Dubai Mall. Dubai Mall is the world famous mall with the um that everybody knows. Emirates Mall is a smaller mall, but it's it's still a big mall that has stuff in it. In the middle of Emirates Mall, there is a igloo in the igloo in the mall there's snow and ice yes you heard me right in the middle of the desert in the middle of a mall in the middle of an igloo there's snow and ice people all that that have happened just for me to be able to witness this amazing thing they had people sliding down like it was a ski slope they had people in the bumper cars that was <laughs> was weird who wants to play bumper cars in the cold but i can imagine that this is the only experience close to experiencing snow that somebody who lives in dubai would experience now we also went to dubai mall dubai mall is the big the biggest mall in uh united arabs that emirates that everyone knows dubai mall in the middle of the mall they just got money they got money i mean the reason why i say they got money is because in the middle of dubai mall there is an aquarium you get it an aquarium i mean a full-size built aquarium not with just regular fish, not with just turtles, but with sharks, with uh, sea bass, with, uh, you know, it had so many things in this aquarium. I'm like, I was wondering what happens if it breaks. But then they explained to us how thick the glass was and that, you know, it doesn't happen. But it's a fancy mall. During this trip, we also did a bus tour. Now, I suggest anybody that's doing this trip do the bus tour. Because what the bus tour does is it takes you around the whole city of Dubai to all the major attractions. Now, I don't think you really have to if you don't have time, if you, you have to stay there at least a week. If you don't stay in Dubai for five days, you're not going to get even half the experience that you can get in Dubai. But it's always best to go on a bus trip because the open bus trip where you can sit on the top and the, the roof is like a, it's like a convertible with nothing on the roof is dope. I did it in a couple other places, which I'll show you, but it was really, really dope in, in Dubai. And um, it drove us past the malls and all the sites and they give you an explanation of everything. And it's really cool. In Dubai, they speak Arabic and English. It's interchangeable, so you'll hear a lot of both because they do get a lot of tourists. Dubai, I think, is the, the most tourist-visited place in the United Arab Emirates. And because of that, you know, it's basically English everywhere. But Arabic is spoken as well. At the first night, we went to a club at the Crown uh, Hotel. Now, here's the thing about the Crown Hotel. The club in the Crown Hotel, because the ratio of men to women in Dubai is higher. There are more men than women in Dubai. The Crown Hotel requires you to bring women when you go inside. Now, this is one thing that they're strict about. They, they won't let you go in by yourself and they won't let you go in with a bunch of guys. It has to be a one-to-one -one ratio when you go there. I don't understand how this works, but this is what they told us. Luckily, I'm a hustler, so I figured this out. There were four college girls standing outside but one of them couldn't get in, so all of them didn't go in because she didn't have her ID. So what I decided was that I would tell them to walk in with us and they wouldn't even check their IDs because we're United States citizens. And guess what? It worked perfectly. The only thing is you can't wear shorts. You can wear shoes, you can wear sneakers, but you can't wear shorts. So my two friends, Common Boy Mel and Educated Fred, had to go back to the hotel and then come back. But 
while they, they were sitting there, I was conversing with the women. Now, in Dubai, it is kind of said or thought to be like frowned upon for men and women to, you know, have relations intimately without being married. So a lot of women have carried themselves a different way. I'll discuss about women more in uh, the part where I talk about women. And I'll, I'll bring back this part right here. Now, while my friends went to the hotel to get dressed, I sat and talked to the girls. And I'll tell you more about that part when uh, the women part comes up. So when my friends came back, we all went inside. It was no problem. During this party, I was lucky enough to meet this great person and this woman named uh, Titi. Now, Titi, also known as Miss International, she has her own YouTube channel, so you can check her out. Um, she teaches in Dubai. She's from Kansas City, but she teaches in Dubai. She told me about this event the next day that was going to be amazing, and it was going to be so fun. This place was called Zero Gravity, and it was a pool party. Now, Zero Gravity was amazing. The whole setup is amazing. It's in Dubai, a marina. Zero gravity was amazing. Um, the cost was about like, it was probably about like 60 or $70 each person, but it includes all drinks and all food. And it's amazing. I mean, the women in Dubai marina, ah, we'll get back to that later. So I just want to say shout out to, uh, Miss International TT for, uh, letting us know about Dubai Marina and about zero gravity because it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. One thing I want to tell you about recording. Now, it's going to sound crazy because in this technology age, it doesn't make sense. But it is illegal to record in the mall or in certain places with professional cameras. Now, follow me here. We're living in a generation where my galaxy note 9 can be used as a professional camera which may even be better than some professional cameras and guess what you can't use professional cameras so a lot of the stuff that i recorded would be on my cell phone and it's still 4k quality but if they see you with a handheld camera they consider all handheld cameras as professional cameras so it was it was one incident when i think we was in a I don't know which mall it was. It was a third mall that we was at or center, some kind of center we was at. And the security guard came up to me and said, I can't record with my camera in the center. So it was, it was, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't a big thing, but it was something. And I just want to let you guys know so you don't get in trouble if you go there and try to get an attitude with them. One activity we did at the Dubai Marina was flyboarding. Now what flyboarding is, is you get on the board and underneath the board, it sucks up the water from the ocean and spits it back out so you fly high in the air. That's the best explanation I can give for it because it was amazing. Now I was a little cautious because I can swim, but the height at which you get up on these flyboards, if you come down, it's gonna sting a little bit. I'm not gonna say it's gonna hurt. You know, I heard of people like going up so high and if you don't have a helmet, it might damage you. But I had a helmet on, they give you helmets, they keep you safe, and it wasn't bad. I got up high, real high. But my friend, my friend, educated Fred, oh man, he was like a pro. And he's like, it's his first time doing it. The last activity I'm going to talk about that we did was amazing also. We did something called, we did something called I Fly Dubai. That's the letter I Fly in Dubai. And what I Fly Dubai is like an indoor parachuting, um, jumping out of a plane experience. What I mean by that is that you go in a wind tunnel. And what the wind tunnel does is it blows wind up in the air and takes you up. And then you have to learn how to basically fly in the wind tunnel. Now this was an amazing experience. I've never felt nothing like this. This is probably the closest I'm gonna ever get to jumping out of a plane. And now they give you a couple chances to do it. The first time you go, they give you like a minute and you just learn the process and um, you know, you learn how to do everything they explain to you. The next event that I went to was, I went and took a bus ride to Abu Dhabi to go see the Grand Mosque. But the Grand Mosque is one of the biggest Islamic centers in the world and it's in Abu Dhabi. Okay, so in order to get there to Abu Dhabi from Dubai I had to walk to the train stop take a 30-minute train to a bus that then took me two hours from Dubai to Abu Dhabi Now all of this that I did to get to this place Was worth it and I'm not a religious person. I don't have a faith. I just believe in myself. That's that's what I do but just being in this Grand Mosque 
gives you some kind of sense of inner inner peace. It gives you some kind of inner peace. That's a, a better way to say it. It gives you some kind of inner peace just being inside of the, the Grand Mosque. Now, when I walked around, I mean marble floors. The water looked like it was untouched by any source. The people were all dressed in amazing garments. Ladies, now ladies, you have to wear Islamic gear if you want to go there. And fellas, there's no shorts. So you have to wear long pants and they allow you to wear sleeveless things. But ladies, you have to be in your full um, garment, hajib. You have to be in your full hajib, ladies. Even if you're not of that faith, it's a sign of respect. Because they don't allow you inside the mosque without wearing the whole hajib. Okay, so now let's respectfully, <laughs> as much as we can, get to the women of Dubai. Where do I start? I guess I can start with some of the laws of Islam and of the United Arab Emirates. Now, it is frowned upon. I'm not sure if it's completely legal. But it's frowned upon for women to date or, um, or rather be involved intimately with men without being married to them in the Middle East or in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. It's more looked at seriously in Abu Dhabi, definitely, but in Dubai, because Dubai is such a big tourist area, it's, you know, a little bit more lenient. Now, when I say it's a little bit more lenient, the odds, I believe, just this is my experience, though. I don't know if you have a different experience. You can tell me in the comments, but... As to my experience of talking to actual women from the United Arabs, United Arab Emirates, um, they don't really converse with you for too long. You can say hello, they'll say hello, you say uh, assalamu alaikum, and they say salam alaikum, but that's about as far as it goes. Um, you can't really tell because a lot of them wear their garments, how beautiful they are, but you can kind of sometimes see the curves. But um, there are a lot of uh, tourists there, and at a party, you might be able to link up with a tourist. The issue with this is that you got to come back to your hotel. And coming back to your hotel with uh, a tourist or somebody who, uh, you know, is not your wife, and they'll, they can give you a hard time. I didn't have that problem because I didn't do that. I, when I was there, I didn't meet any. Well, yes, I did. Actually, I did. Let me go back to that. When I was there, I met some. I met a couple of women from uh, the college. I met a woman for, oh, you know what, I, I just realized I actually was making out with a girl. When I was there, I was actually making out with a girl from a college off of Dubai. It's a college It's a college that's next to uh, where the Dubai is at. It's like an all-girls school. And um, they had came from the all-girls school. And the way we was making out in the club, I thought maybe it was a chance that, you know, we could hang out later. But, you know, it just didn't work out that way. And... It's their fun. Like the only time you're going to even be able to get in touch with the women is with the college girls or with tourists. Is the the women of United Arab Emirates? Yeah, yeah. You probably won't have a chance to even speak, say more than hello and goodbye to them. Um, it was fun. the The places that we went was fun. There was other places like you could have met women. Like when we was at the um when we was at Zero Gravity, there was a lot of women there. But out in the open, it was a little more cautious to walk up to women. And, you know, I was the only single one on the trip. So it wasn't like, you know, I had like a backup, a wingman just in case, you know, stuff went sour. Because all the girls came in groups. There wasn't really any women uh, from other countries that came by themselves. Now, there were a lot of different women that were from um, different airlines. Like, I actually linked up with this girl that was from United Emirates. And she was cool. But um, I was so tipsy, I wrote her number down wrong. But she took my number and she called me. Then when I was trying to call her back, it was just not working. But um, it was cool though. Um, now let's get to uh, how do I say this? I'm trying to do this respectfully because I know it's an Islamic country. But now let's get to the pros. Back at the beginning of this guide to Dubai, I told you about my boy Flop, Flop Santana, telling me and telling us about this place called York Hotel. Hey yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy F R E Dollar Sign H Fresh at the Flyboy Way, all platforms. I know y'all looking like, hey yo, what is Flyboy doing? I know there's another part to these videos. Yes, but unfortunately, I had to put them behind the paywall because my number one video, the Black Man's Got to Cartagena, was taken off. And you guys know when I like to tell a story, I like to tell a story the way it is. I don't like to hold stuff back that others may find offensive. And unfortunately. We cannot do that anymore on 
most platforms. So until I create my website, I had to put all the rest of the guys that you're going to see in the, the version, the full version behind the um, membership. Um, eventually, I will create a, um, a website and it will be free just for the guides. I have about 12 different guides right now, or 15 different guides right now. I don't know, a lot. Um, so you can subscribe to the membership. I made it only $5 because I, I think that stops it from being a major issue with YouTube. It's, I guess, something that we kind of worked out. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope this helped you. That's the reason why I made these videos PG and put them back on um, for the whole public to see because I think with information comes safety. And if you get the information, it can help you stay safe when you travel the world. It's your boy, F-R-E, dollar sign H Fresh at the Flyboy Way. That's T-H-E-F-L-Y-B-O-Y-W-A-Y. Don't ask why. Just check out the channel. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.